Uh, if it's a um, a ticket booth machine for buying tickets on the underground, there could be barcodes there which it will recognize and pop up information on, on special offers or information on how to buy things. If your language, if you don't speak Japanese, it can present information uh, in English. If you're a restaurant, um, it can present information on a particular menu item that's there, and it could also present information on customer reviews and what they thought of it as well. And today, this information is already available. Augmented reality is already coming through. Uh, one example with the Android phone is something called Shop Savvy, where it actually recognizes the barcodes on products, things like DVDs or, or CDs. And what you can do is go into a shop, uh, put your phone on top of the barcode and run this program. And it will search for it. It will give you information on, on that particular artist and reviews on the song. But it will also do a search to see if there are other shops in the same vicinity that do the price, um, do it at a better price than the one that you've got. It will look to see whether there's a better price on the web and whether you could order it through that. And so this mechanism for delivering information through the mobile phone in the context of, of, a, of a real world situation, I think it's going to have a huge impact on the way in which support information is going to be delivered uh, in the future. And I think another impact within the environment of mobile phones or cell phones is the introduction of Pico projectors as well. And I've added a link again at the end of this presentation to, uh, to some demonstrations of of uh, cell phones that are coming through where they have an uh, a projector embedded into the mobile phone. So you can run a video or have web-based information and you can project it onto a surface. So if you're an aircraft engineer and you need to know how to uh, maintain um, an engine or to dismantle a particular piece of equipment, what you can do is rather than taking in a, a large workshop manual, is you can take your mobile phone in and you can project onto any surface that's uh, to hand uh, a large schematic or a video showing you how to disassemble or reassemble a piece of equipment. So I think this is going to change the portability of information and also the, the nature of what's there to, and, and lead to more video-based content. And also a third technology that's coming through uh, is Google Wave, which has uh, been announced within about the last eight weeks and has now gone into limited beta. There have been posts on some technical authoring sites uh, saying that it changes everything. Um, it may do. What, uh, what um, Google Wave does is it, it combines the idea of email conversation and the idea of documents and merges them into one so that you have a, a conversation stream where people can join as decisions or questions are being raised. People can go back to certain points and add their comments and uh, review what's been said already and people can add information at different points to create a sort of a collaborative document which is back to the, to the video and the, the survey of the students at, at uh, KCU. And the, the, Generation Y students in the way in which they behave, behave. So we end up with a very collaborative piece of information in some ways that can be closed down at one point in time or, or be continuous in its life, which does have implications over version control, of course. And I think Google Wave is something that all technical authors, technical communicators should pay attention to and consider for the future. So how are we all going to do all of this? Well, I think at the moment we're in a position where we don't know what deliverables we might be expected to provide. So I think we have to plan to be able to produce all manner of different deliverables. And that means being, having the, the display, the form and the function separated. So this means semantic markup. This means marking the text by its meaning and not by how it displays. It means metadata. Um, about the content in its entirety, and it means providing content in a presentation neutral approach, almost a Lego brick approach to, to content and building it up into different deliverables. I think it means the, the principles of Web 2, that content can be 
discussed, it can be aggregated so we get content from various sources coming in to one center and it can be exploded the other way, it can be syndicated in different ways. And that really means today some form of XML standard and XML based authoring. Rahel Bailey did a very good presentation, I've seen the slide, I didn't see the presentation itself at STC called the New Face of Documentation, in which he says that content has to be written in a way that it can be portable and that it has to be componentized to do that. And again, I think this means XML based authoring. Now, it may be that, well, certainly, I think it means for technical communication and publications department that content is going to be treated as an asset that can be written once and reused many times. Now, it may be that the businesses and the organizations, as they become more focused on intellectual property, um, start looking at all information and seeing that as an asset as well. So this uh, approach to managing content may lead to uh, the, the adoption of component-based authoring across the organization itself. Certainly organizations like UPS are now seeing their value not so much in the delivery of the parcels themselves, but the information about the parcels, where they are in the process, where they're going to be delivered today, where they were delivered yesterday, who signed for them. And I think that that corporate-based approach to seeing information as an asset may also lead to corporate-wide this component component to, uh, implementation of, it, of information into components and could lend itself to a big opportunity for technical authors to manage content corporate wide. I'm a little bit skeptical it will happen because from a personality perspective it didn't have it is not necessarily suited to most typical authors. They're not the sort of people that would grab a project like that. And it didn't happen with the introduction of internets as well. Somebody else took on that particular role. But it could do. So where are we in all of this? Let, let's look back and summarize what, what's been said. I think where we're going, I think what we have as a, uh, as a profession at the moment is a problem that a lot of what we do isn't measured. And therefore, there is a real risk that we are being bypassed and that there is a generation that's being that's growing up where they expect content in a certain way, particularly in having it delivered on the web, and that the deliverables that technical communicators provide isn't relevant to them. I think there's a change in economics within the world that's emphasizing the need for trusted relationships and attention-based economics, which means that content has to provided in the right context at the right time and has to be trustworthy. And these are to the strengths of technical documentation, technical authors, but they have to take advantage of this and recognize these and explain what they do in this context. And we're in an unpredictable world where there's going to be a need to, to deliver content in lots and lots of different um, media and deliverables. And that means we have to produce content in a way that's flexible and can be produced in other ways. So we take the criticisms of Dave Clark of single source implementations, and once we have it in the system, we focus on delivering stuff that's of value above the water for the user. So we're 44 minutes, 43 minutes, I think. I'm, I'm uh, under by two minutes, but I think.